Uh, now that we have uh, gotten an overview of the EPC um, architecture and the EU TRAN uh, architecture in the previous sections, uh, before we take a deeper dive uh, into the network elements, uh, we are going to provide you a summary of the architecture that we have um, looked at so far, uh, just to recap some of the stuff and refresh uh, so that we have uh, a better understanding before we take a deeper dive. So on this slide here, um, it's this picture uh, looks familiar to you, hopefully. Um, and we have the EU TRAN here, we have the EPC, uh, we have all the network elements here. And what uh, we have summarized here are the different functions uh, for each of these network elements here. And uh, some of these functions uh, we have talked about, some of them are new, but we have talked about them uh, uh, in the section. So your E node B uh, is responsible for radio resource management bearer control, admission control, connection, mobility control, uplink and downlink scheduling, IP header compression and ciphering of user data stream. Uh, it's also responsible for MME selection, uh, for paging idle mode subscribers uh, at, the, uh, at the request of the MME. CMAS is commercial mobile alerting system. So this is a 3GPP defined uh, functionality where say if there were a catastrophic event um, in an area, you have the ability of uh, transmitting uh, warning messages uh, to the UEs uh, within a given region and there are, uh, and all that uh, is defined by um, 3GPP, the framework of how to deliver those messages. Uh, but in general, they are part of a, what is called CMAS. Uh, MME, we talked about non-access stratum, NAS signaling, uh, so attachment, uh, better setup, deletion. So this guy is the controller for all the um, better setups, deletions, and modifications. Uh, it's responsible for all the NAS signaling security, signaling for mobility between uh, networks, uh, like we talked uh, before. Uh, idle mode user tracking, tracking area list management, selection of the P gateway and the HTW, roaming, uh, authentication. Uh, the serving gateway is uh, responsible for local mobility anchor for inter E node B handovers. So as UEs are moving between E node Bs, this guy here buffers all the data uh, while the signaling is happening for uh, handovers. And then once the signaling is done, and the user is connected to the new E node B, the, uh, the data is uh, delivered to that E node B. Um, lawful intercept, so say somebody from the law enforcement agencies want to eavesdrop, uh, eavesdrop on a given subscriber. So the, the way, one of the ways they would do that is uh, uh, why the STW, they, because all the data traffic is passing through this box. Um, so if they wanted to <clears throat> see what uh, what somebody's doing they would uh, they would sniff out uh, that traffic right here uh, packet routing and forwarding uh, transport level uh, packet marking uh, we talked about this um, accounting for interoperator charging so in a roaming scenario uh, say you have roamers in your network um, the billing can be done uh, at the HW. Uh, accounting per UE, yeah, we talked about uh, charging that for your own subscribers, you can do billing here as well. Home subscription server, uh, right here, uh, storage of subscription data, authentication keys, uh, credentials, uh, QoS profile, APN profile, uh, APN will, is called access point name, and um, uh, this defines uh, the P gateway selection, so... Uh, address of currently serving MME and tracking area. So the um, the HSS also keeps track of which uh, MME a given subscriber is connected to and uh, the tracking area. Um, uh, so the PDN gateway is uh, again lawful intercept. Uh, if somebody wanted to sniff traffic, uh, they can sniff right here. IP address allocation, uh, transport level marking for downlink. Uh, downlink rate enforcement based on AMBER, uh, which is uh, aggregate maximum bit rate. 
so we talked about uh, that you can have uh, different policies uh, for subscribers and one use case would be uh, say you wanted to deliver different data speeds um, across your subscribers and um, one of the ways you can do that is uh, uh, by enforcing those policies in the P gateway you can also do some billing information uh, at the P gateway uh, so this is again another uh, network element that's capable of doing depending on your uh, network you may decide to do it either here or uh, at the SGW. So this completes an overview of the network architecture uh, in LTE. Uh, next, we are going to take a deeper dive into some of the protocols uh, and also a little more in-depth uh, view of each of these network elements uh, in the following sections. So I'm hoping by now you have a fairly decent understanding of the architecture at a high level at least um, and are prepared to take a deeper dive uh, into the network elements. If there are uh, any questions or doubts, I would recommend uh, pausing here and going back uh, for review of some of the data that may be uh, not so clear uh, or something that you may want to refresh uh, before moving forward.